He's like, I don't care what you're saying. Yeah, that, but he does have the lyrics on there. But once Ludacris is played, this Chris, Christian uh, documentary, this just starts going all in on metal. They start playing Ozzy, pre-Robert the Doll Days Ozzy, uh, King Diamond. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Like I said before, imagine being a kid at this thing and you were introduced to just so much killer music as this thing go on. Like stuff that kids right? in some like, Bible oh. study in the South or Midwest, they had no access to at all. And... Let's hear the segment on punk icon Lydia Lunch now. Punk artist Lydia Lunch has performed with a number of bands in the last decade. Among them, Teenage Jesus and the Jerks. Her songs include Crown of Thorns and the strident I and the Lord Jesus, most of which was recorded backwards. Here you go, kids. Teenage Jesus and the Jerks. There's no way a kid at that time was finding this at picking this up at Kmart or Gaylord. This doc is, I would say, if anything, it's important in introducing a lot, a lot of underground rock to just a huge audience of kids. That's the best part for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's ironic in that sense, you know, when they try to like advise you against things and then they end up introducing the cool stuff. It's like, wow, I wasn't even going to know about this music. So thanks for the tip. Yeah. The only infuriating part about that Lydia Lunch thing, uh, they didn't reverse the song and get the messages. Come on, get on it. They reverse everything. They played that. They didn't play what it meant. Oh, well. But here's another deep cut that they get into. <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of Spooky Tooth? No, what? What? No. no. Nope. Well, me neither. Let's hear about them. <laughs> Moving on to Christ's sufferings on the cross, Spooky Tooth's album Ceremony depicts Jesus as some cosmic buffoon with his hand nailed into his head. Oh, okay, God. that's what Spooky Tooth does. A cosmic Oof. buffoon. I don't know how they got that. It's just an image <laughs> of a guy. It's a guy with like his hand nailed to his head. I guess it could be uh, interpreted as in some kind of Christly way. But cosmic buffoon, I'm like, where is he getting this? Who's writing I hope this somebody stuff? uses that as a sign-off in others at some point. Oh, cosmic, cosmic buffoon. buffoon. Yeah. <laughs> Boner yogurt. Tooth. This is a cosmic buffoon. Cosmic <laughs> buffoon. Do a boner yogurt. You guys have met. <laughs> he also talks about the band Blue Oyster Cult, just a favorite Ooh, of everyone. Mm. And they're used to them well. recently with yeah. the Blue Chicken Cult. Yeah, oh, Blue yeah. Oyster Cult, Blue Chicken Cult. But they they have a, they use a lot of satanic imagery, and he plays a song that has a hidden message. Now, guys, when you hear this Blue Oyster Cult jam, listen for these listen for these squeaky voices over the guitar part. Just listen. Oh, no. Listen to a song off their Mirrors album. All right, did you hear it? Did you hear the little it sound like mm -hmm. nibbling or something? No, mm -hmm. I'm just used to um, like bad quality recordings. I guess it just I, I didn't hear it at all. It kind of sounded like this was going on in the background. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, good pull. Good pull. I totally but missed it. Now he's going to slow it down, though. You're going to get to hear it. He's going to slow down that weird voice, and he's going to reveal the hidden message. Not too satanic on the surface, but now listen to the high-pitched squeaky sound that occurred during the guitar lead, this time at a fraction of its regular speed. Again. One more time. All right, that's really hard to make out still. He's saying, hmm. furthermore, our Father who art in heaven, Satan. And that's was just a sped up thing. Let's hear soundboard three. Listen for now. You're going to listen for furthermore, our Father who art in heaven, Satan. I don't know. It could have been our Father who art in heaven, Stan. It was hard. He cut the way he cuts it is yeah. terrible. I don't understand how that's malicious or how that's like. That's not going to affect anybody. Nobody can under even. You can't understand what it is because oh. it's all modified and and fucked yeah. with. And it, this like, is, is that supposed to subliminally? Yeah, go into your brain. You make me want to go to church. They shoot lasers at you at shows and stuff. It's, so they end up shooting things into your mind all the time. This is what Blue Oyster Cult does. So, they put but sneaky you're, stuff like this in there. So does he think that your brain is able to process it and transcribe whatever the hidden message is, and then that leaves such um, impact in your brain that that's going to influence you? Because that's really that's 
I don't know. I don't. And I'm then, not in, and then influenced you to do oh. what? You know, at this point, like what? Oh, <laughs> what he, are they yeah, like, me do here? <laughs> you just oh, worship uh, Satan? Like, oh, big deal. Well, you'll be in church and you'll be saying soundboard three. <laughs> I still like all I can hear. It sounds like I'm at like some one of those uh, truck stops where there's like some kind of drive through going on. People are reading out some order that you have to get. Like it's just like nonsense. It does. It does like, kind of sound like someone's at a drive through with the music blasting really loud. Yeah. And they're trying to you, order over their music. You can't really top that, Wendy or Williams. That is the clearest back back masking I have ever heard. Clear, concise, to the point, getting it done. Love that <laughs> one. Well, we can hear another. Speaking of yeah, Wendy or Williams being introduced to kids in a church basement. Here's a clip from another. Brand that I have never heard of. On this line, the group scraping fetus off the wheel sings. And the the scraping fetus off the wheel? Where does he find this? I've, I've never heard of them oh, before. No, great Whoa. band. Great Whoa. band. What a so picture. Good. Paints a real image in your mind with that name. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I, mean, I did find dude, it. They oh, donate no. to charities. It's fine. Fuck. They're, but yeah, they're, the, they're really an, good. Another <laughs> another great tastemaker this Eric guy is for these uh these young teens in the eighties going to laugh at this thing. But these Satan loving these Satan loving rockers, they love slipping those subliminal messages. <laughs> you know, so far we have already heard we've heard backwards masking, we heard a sped up voice that was hard to make out, and now we have another one from the band Christian Death. I'm shocked they're actually in this. Oh, no. Let's hear one from them. The last two lines were written out and sung backwards. When you reverse the letters, you get, There is no city of God. Damn the name of God. So oh, this shit. band, so Christian Death was too lazy to back mask. They and they just read lyrics backwards, and this guy figured it out. Like, <laughs> they're reading their well, liner I mean, notes. Yeah, really. What I don't get is like why these bands don't have the balls to just like make those the lyrics, like just sing those words if that's how you feel. Yeah, I feel why like do you most make of them do backwards. It's like I, get, I can't imagine Ozzy back masking anything. It's like no, you're just saying worship the devil, and like you just like yeah. everything is in your face. You don't have to be subliminal. Like a subliminal Dude, thing yeah. would be like I don't know. Like hug your wife or something. I don't know what Ozzy, was put in there. Ozzy does not need. Ozzy doesn't hold back. When Ozzy has to do something, he just he just gets it out there. <laughs> does not hold anything back. He's not going to nah, mask he shit. He can't. It's he's physically incapable of holding that back. I mean, most of us are. But yeah, you know, just fucking do it. Just say it. If that's how you feel, don't try to hide it by recording it backwards. Just fucking say it. Well, this is the thing, and, the, and I will say for Ozzy, he is about five percent of this entire documentary. It's Ozzy is just a go-to to show. That's that's maybe being a little conservative. He is all in this, but just if you, he's just so in your face, it's not shocking to hear that, that he. Yeah, we know, we get it, Ozzy from yeah. Black Sabbath. We know you got to do more to convince us. So. That was it. That was it for part two. Part two was called The Root of Rock. And we're going to talk a little bit about part three. What comes after The Root of Rock? Of course, The Fruit of Rock. Part three. <laughs> everyone come back now. It's time for The Fruit of Rock. And The Fruit of Rock is much darker than the other parts. As you're going to hear. Oh, it, no. Oh, yeah. It sucks in this clip. <laughs> On April 12th, 1985, a 14-year-old metalhead killed three people. An Iron Maiden freak whose involvement with the occult led him to carve 666 into his chest. The boy claimed to have been under the influence of Eddie, Iron Maiden's mascot, when he committed the murders. Yeah, Jesus. Eddie, the mascot of Iron Maiden. This, uh, he, as he calls him, uh, my words, is Iron Maiden freak. This is part is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, That's derogatory. That, seemed, that that was like a dick move just to call him a freak for no reason. Like, yeah. I understand he he tried to kill somebody or he did kill somebody. He did. He did kill somebody. Um, yeah. But uh, but come on, just because he likes Iron Maiden doesn't make him a freak. Maybe because he's a murderer. Maybe yeah. that's call him an Iron Maiden murderer. Although he's a that fucking would sound like he murder. Iron Maiden. And when you have a kid like this doing this and saying, "Yeah, Eddie, Iron Heavy Metal made me do it," almost cannot blame Christians <laughs> at all for going all out and doing this kind of thing. When, when if stuff like that happens, it's like, well, yeah, this is a natural reaction is to do something like this. I don't know. You know yeah, who he, this sucks. This part. You know sucks. who he reminded me of? Kind of the Eddie thing. Eddie's like the original Slender Man. What? 
Because uh, those girls, those girls, they tried to kill somebody for Slender Man. Just oh, sounds maybe. very, okay. Oh, yeah, maybe okay. you know what I mean? Like I see they, they like worshipped him, worshipped Slender Man like an idol or like oh, some God. sort of a, a deity. Yeah, but you know? but also like nobody put that idea in their heads. I mean, I don't know. I could be speaking out of line here, but at what point did anybody say, "Hey, could somebody please murder somebody in my name? I'd really appreciate it." If you're in jail your whole life and you have to think back now and go, yeah, that stupid Iron Maiden Eddie is why oh, I was that damn threw song. my life away I, for I, that. God damn it. I, yeah, I played it back. threw my life my away bad. for that dumb thing because I saw him as a pyramid one time and I, don't know, I was high <laughs> and it blew my yeah. mind. And it's like isolated <laughs> thing. It's one person. You know, if I understand if there was tons of Iron Maiden freaks out there yeah, all at go, once. going on murderous sprees, but that's not the that case. It's just hey, this one asshole. Because yeah, we're fighting it. We're going to fight it with more of this. Hopefully everybody will be off the rock as soon as we're done with this. Shouldn't be too much longer. Love and light. <laughs> we got a little more light. rock murder. Uh, and this one, this one is much, much, much more famous. The now infamous California mass murderer Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, was reportedly led into his obsession with the occult and ritual murder through groups like ACDC. A schoolmate reported that it was their song, Night Prowler, that particularly seemed to affect Ramirez. On the record cover for Highway to Hell, the album on which Night Prowler appears, the singer of the song wears a pentagram around his neck. The most common of satanic symbols, it became Ramirez's calling card, appearing on the walls of his victim's homes and sometimes on the victim himself. Yeah, you can't really take this one away. Uh, ACDC made the Night Stalker. This is a tough one. Um, uh, poor ACDC. Anyone want to stick up for them? Um, they had it, some good songs. I mean, he's just a, he's just a poor schoolboy. Leave him alone. <laughs> Angus, yeah, leave Angus, Angus Young has never he's never hurt anybody in his life. He just oh, likes to play that, that guitar. If Come there on. was a way to pin this on Brian Johnson, the new singer guy, yeah, I would. But I think he think he was talking about <laughs> Bon Scott. Put it at rest in peace. So well, rest feel bad peace. that yeah, right, ACDC. A place. lot of bands, a lot of bands got pulled into stuff like this. Uh, they talk about Ozzy and with Suicide Solution. That was a big part of this. But another thing, it's it's Ozzy. Maybe you shouldn't have made a song called Suicide Solution, but you did. I mean, and things happened. Yeah, yeah. Damn. I mean, it's people terrible. gotta be able to express themselves. You know, it doesn't. Like, things aren't always happy, hey. and sometimes shit is really shitty, right. and you gotta express that in your music. Sometimes that's right. And, and he said it the is he's is. not. He wasn't trying to censor anyone. He just wants to let you know that you guys are a bunch of degenerate pieces of crap. You should cut <laughs> it out. You hurt people, and you can I mean, live they're not way. They, luckily, they don't stay on that murder and suicide tip long because it's back to MTV time. We got to pull everyone back in and. This time, we're going to hear from the Dark Prince of Rock, John Bon Jovi, and here he is, luring in the innocent with contests of evil. That's before MTV turned it into... I'm John Bon Jovi, and I want you to spend a weekend of unbridled hedonism with me and these guys. Yeah! Yeah. Uh Uh-huh! And by hedonism, do we mean you can do anything you please, no matter how wild, strange, or excessive? Hell yes! And... Oh, man, count me in. That sounds awesome. Hedonism. He's openly pushing for hedonism. And honestly, please, Bon Jovi, how wild are they really getting here? What do you think? Right. How tamely wild is this? Rob, it's, do you even listen we to We did bon body shots one night. <laughs> do I, we did do I even listen to Bon Jovi, you're asking me? Yeah. Um, of course I listen to Bon Jovi all the time. Come on, what do I look it's like? That's what you do. Like That's what you do when you're seeking pleasure. I yeah, don't... well, especially when I'm feeling extra satanic. I'll put on some Bon Jovi <laughs> and uh, I really uh, Honestly, laid a couple candles. Honestly, Rob, a lot of this lines <laughs> up with some of your hedonistic ways of life. I see it now. Because <laughs> all this hedonism talk, it leads to drugs. And rock and roll. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Yeah, there you go. You guys love your drugs. Oh, not drugs. I hate so, drugs. You, you, yeah, you think drugs are fun? Here's a fun fact about the Beastie Boys. Another self-destructive and occult-related activity that has been popularized by rock music is drug abuse. The Beastie Boys' best-selling album, Licensed to Ill, for example, contains over 90 <laughs> references to drugs and alcohol abuse. What is not as well known, however, is drugs' connections to the spiritual realm. Psychotropic or mind-altering substances are viewed by sorcerers and others involved in the occult as a gateway or a guide into the spirit world. Well, well, the end wasn't fun, but yeah, 90 references. I honestly thought there would have been more Beastie Boys drug references on License oh, to Ill. Surprised. I thought he said 19. 
Oh, I, I think like, he said no. He said 20? over ninety. He's over ninety. 90. Well, this is the album. That's literally like one song nowadays. Like one SoundCloud rapper song, you can probably get all of that. Well, yeah. I mean, when they repeat it, they're like Xanax, 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 Xanax. And he br- sure. He brought it. He brought it about <laughs> to drug references. You're just. A- 